The Defeated. Great title. 57th Expedition Beyond the Walls Part 6. Yeah, it's hard for me to think of a greater defeat in any show ever than what they experienced. Right. I think that might explain why Mikasa was able to fight it so successfully. She was probably tired. Also, Mikasa's awesome. Yeah. Very intelligent. It's not his first time in the stomach, so... They did everything. They really tried everything. Nice, I've been waiting for them to interact. They're an interesting pair. Nice, Mikasa Levi team is so cool. Maybe they can do what the whole corpse couldn't do. Looks like respect. <laughs> She's like, oh shit, it's Levi. Oh. Whoa! Damn! That spinning attack though. <laughs> Living up to his reputation. That's what I want to see. Whoa. Yeah. That's crazy. Maybe he could have helped out earlier. <laughs> I was wrong. Mikasa was right. Yeah, but it lures people in, though. Did he just break his ankle? Totally saved her, though. Oh, there he is! Uh, that doesn't look good. <laughs> he didn't get bitten, but he's, like, encased in mucus. I can't believe that actually worked. You should clean his mouth area. Okay. She's crying. I know. Yeah, there's something really emotional about her. That's what makes this whole thing so bizarre and adds like a whole layer of emotion to it that you don't normally find. Even though I have no idea what the Titan is. I can feel that there's a high probability that what she's doing is good. You know what I mean? Or like there's a good reason for it. And so it's so confusing to watch things happen like Petra being smushed and Ulo being smushed and the other guy being smushed <laughs> and feeling the pain of that but also like in some level feeling the pain of this female titan it's so cool i feel like this is one of those things that's set up for you to hate the female titan right and then you get farther along the show and you learn new things that put the whole previous scene into a different perspective which will like enhance the tragedy but even though that might be set up for later i already kind of feel that and so the tear sort of like adds to that like it sort of confirms that for me a little bit although i still could be wrong that was a short scene but that's one of my favorites so far i think that was just so cool it's always a great feeling when people live up to your expectations if you're going to paint someone as being a hero you got to deliver you got to show them being a hero and i feel like that scene delivered really well first of all i mean the animation was incredible but also the fact that even mikasa who so far i think we've seen in terms of like practical ability in terms of actual sequences as being one of the best most capable characters levi just totally dwarfed her ability Mikasa was just sort of standing by, distracting the Titan while Levi, like, cut the thing to pieces. My thoughts going into this episode were, well, I guess we're gonna see whatever the Titan has in store for Eren. <laughs> I guess we're gonna have an Eren Titan arc. He just goes to Titan HQ or something, I don't know. But, uh, but no, Levi. You never know, you never know. There's gonna be, like, huge political fallout from this. They are, and people are gonna jump all over them. And Erwin knows that, too. But Eren sort of proved himself. I guess that's the one shining light. I don't think he is. Oh no, they're gonna do it for all of them? And Petra's family? <sighs> he looks like Ula too. Every victory is followed by a tragedy. And preceded by tragedy. There's tragedy on all sides. Levi doesn't show it, but this has got to mean a lot to him, too. I mean, there were those horrible shots of him, like, having to race to the female titan, and then finding the bodies of some of his closest comrades. And there's been no time really to process that. Right. 
This, like many things recently, reminds me of Metal Gear Solid, the end of the first game, where the message is something like, you never know what's gonna happen. And the best you can do at any time is just live your life. It's like what Levi was saying, you know, things just happen. He was saying that in a negative light where it's like, bad things happen. But that works the other way too, right? Like great things happen unexpectedly as well. It's very weird to think about for me because, you know, for all the emphasis I put on like planning my life and doing things I wanna do, when I really think about it, a lot of the best and worst things that have happened to me were completely unexpected. I've been thinking about this a lot recently in light of a good example that I have. There was one night in Korea a long time ago where I went out with a friend and we ended up at this club and we ended up just talking to these two girls and that girl became someone I hung out with regularly. And in that time period, a friend visited me and met her and fast forward like seven or so years and they're having a baby and they're married. And it makes me so happy to think about that, but it's also bizarre because for all the things I've done in my life, for all the hard work I put in, that might be the best thing I've ever done. And it was completely random. And it wasn't at all like a choice I made or like something I wanted, you know, it just happened. That's just the nature of life. And you guys have probably figured out I'm big on like, you know, personalizing everything. In some ways there's very little control that we have. And I think like the one thing we can actually control is ourselves and our lives and how we process things and how we show up to things, right? And the rest is just sort of like out of our hands. And that's a tough thing to accept, but there's also a beauty to that. You know, it's like life is you plus circumstance, you know? So this mission was a complete disaster and it's tragic, but who were they, right? They were amazing people. They were all ultimately incredibly heroic. And so, you know, me trying to find like goodness and optimism in there, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, I imagine they have a lot of guilt about it. You know, like why are they alive and everyone else isn't? I'm amazed they're questioning Erwin's orders. They're a little more terrified of Levi, maybe? Oh man, they have so many human feelings. Yeah, just because they don't agree doesn't mean they're not feeling the same thing you are. I mean, they are. I mean, Erwin's probably feeling it more than anybody. This is on his watch. One thing that's interesting for me observing myself watching this is like, in general, I'm very anti-authority, but I find myself like being angry when people question Erwin, which is great. I mean, that's a great thing they've done with this character because I think that it's not just that he's an authority, end of story. He's a deserved authority. We haven't really seen that much of Erwin, but they do such a great job like giving that feeling really quickly. And I imagine Erwin is having a really, really hard time right now, but he can't show it because he's the leader. These cards are kind of hilarious because they have such a range in like usefulness. Some of them are amazing, like the ones about the walls, that was really useful info. But then sometimes they give trivia that's sort of like common knowledge, like wagons are used for horses to pull things. It's like, okay, thanks. Thanks for letting me know about the wagons. He's had a big day. He's all tuckered out. Oh God, it's awful. Come on, just let's just let this mission end. <laughs> They've been through enough. Oh, he went back and got him. He, he disobeyed orders. And he led all the titans to them. Great job. Well done. Oof, I wonder how Erwin will react to this. Um, how's that outrunning going? <laughs> The guy looks really happy. Nice. You're lucky Mikasa was there. Yeah, and if they're part of their survey corps, they probably would be okay with the sacrifice. You had to step on them too. That insult to injury. Oh no! It's so much more real for me now. At least she didn't get stepped on. What's his punishment? A Levi kicking? Wow, he actually got that. Damn, showing some mercy too in like the hardest moment. He could have come down on him, but that was such a great choice. Yeah, that's some karma right there for saying that they're not human. Levi and Erwin are 100% human. They're just operating at a different level. They have humanity plus responsibility. <laughs> I'm getting defensive now about Levi and Erwin. Nobody better talk about my Erwin. <laughs> and that makes Levi look so reasonable. I mean, this guy might still get punished. I don't know. Maybe I'm talking prematurely. But I think there's punishment for punishment's sake. And then there's punishment for effect. But if you really look at this guy, the effect was made. I feel like 
Levi sort of broke through a layer there and honed in on what was actually happening, what really was important there, which was just helping this guy come to a realization and getting closure, which I think Levi can understand. Like, he just watched Petra's body roll off the wagon, too. Such a great scene. Flashback. We've seen this, but this isn't what happened. This isn't how it happened the first time, right? <laughs> Was that a dream or something more? If I remember correctly, she grabbed him and like beat the crap out of him, right? There are a lot fewer, yeah. Oh man, this gives it a whole new perspective. Yeah, I see why that flashback was important. Now we've come full circle. These people just don't understand. And that was sort of anger-inducing the first time, but this time, having actually seen it and witnessed it firsthand, it's so much more aggravating. <laughs> like, part of me can still understand, you know? Like, that's just what people do. It's easy to take a snapshot of something and then, like, extrapolate what you think you know about it and then, you know, sort of make these binary judgments about it. When the real picture will almost always be more complex. Like, it sort of has to be more complex than we know it is. So I get it. They're not malicious. They just don't. No, they just don't understand the sacrifice people made. But what really hurts me about this is not their opinion, but the fact that people like Erwin have to come into town after something like that and then listen to that. My heart goes out to Erwin even more just because everyone's dealing with tragedy right now. But like I said, Erwin is dealing with everything they're dealing with plus responsibility. So he just has to eat it and it's not over. Like this is just the townspeople. He's going to hear more of it from the, the politicians or whatever. Focus on the positive. Oh no! Please don't ask him to take care of her. That's not where I thought that was going, but still tragic. Man, how strong do you have to be to be Erwin and put up with this? You're going to be made scapegoats. That's what they wanted all along. You know what's bizarre about that whole thing? There are going to be some people who are happy about what what happened because it gives them what they wanted. That's actually something I've noticed in real life that scares me. It's like when there's tragedy, the response to that tragedy gets politicized. And then I see people like rooting for the failure of other people or rooting for the deaths of others. But I think that there are other motivations underneath that, which are like wanting people to obey, you know, or like wanting people who think differently succumb to harm so that you can be right. You know what I mean? This is a very cynical take. I don't think this is where most people are. It's just something I've noticed enough to worry me. It's as if one's own goals or one's own desire of how the world should be are so important that People who don't follow that should befall harm, ideally. Which to me is like so devoid of humanity, but I definitely get that sense from this world. Like I feel like they're gonna be politicians, especially people who are against Aaron, and who might even wanna use Aaron for their own purposes, right? Not even just to like imprison him or quarantine him or whatever, who are gonna be thrilled that this expedition failed, that they can hold Erwin accountable. It's pretty dark stuff. I mean, it's a very, very dark episode all around. The benefit of it is that it really brings me closer to them. Like I feel a lot of solidarity for the Survey Corps, and I feel like I didn't fully appreciate them before. I didn't appreciate them like this in the beginning of the series. And I feel like it's pushed me a little bit closer to Aaron's perspective. Although I would like to maintain a space to not blame it on malice, although there definitely is malice to some extent, and think about it more as just ignorance. Like, people don't really understand. To be fair, how could they? Like, how could they understand what happened unless they were there? I feel like that's just to be expected. Like, if you're not involved in something, you're probably not going to understand it really well. And I think if we really did have that understanding, it would be hard to still be so adamantly hateful about certain things. I've had a lot of experiences where I've been completely turned around on my opinion of someone after a key experience I had that like made me connect them to it or made me connect that reasoning to it, you know what I mean? And in those cases, even if I still don't agree with the behavior, at least I'm like, okay, I can see how one would fall into that or I can see how people might think that. So the townspeople, it's unfortunate, but I kind of get it. I think the more insidious threat is the people who are going to use this or have very selfish goals and see this as an opportunity. Anyway, very heavy episode. Starting off with that amazing sequence and then just... Well, you know, 
It was a lot. It was a lot to handle, but it's really great stuff. The series is definitely elevated to a new level for me. I'm really glad that you guys convinced me to watch it. <laughs> Keep watching it. Before the video ends, a very special thank you to all my patrons for making these videos possible and for all the support. Special shout out this week to those who joined the top tier on Patreon. Ricardo Arenas. Ricardo Arenas. And... Ricardo Arenas. <laughs> thank you to you. Thank you to all my patrons for the massive support. Thank you to everybody watching. And I'll see you next time for the final week of Attack on Titan Season 1.